Yeah, I could remember far back as 1987 when uh, my brother Dre, he used to, you know, he was a young boy. He was about, I don't know, maybe 16. And he used to be uh, on the corner hustling a little bit, you know, playing chicky at the spot. And uh, right by the train station and train 8th Avenue which was a, a heavy spot for, you know, for whatever. And uh, one day he was like, yo, come with me to the spot. I want you to uh, to meet this dude that comes from, you know, from Queens or something. I thought he was from Uptown. I know he got roots in the Bronx. So my brother was like, yo, I want to, you know, I want you to go to the spot with me because he spits. So I said, all right, I'll take a walk down there. You know what I'm saying? I heard of the kid, you know what I'm saying? I heard of him because he was chilling with, you know, one of my homeboys, Tron, and my other homeboy, Carlos, CB3. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I went down with Dre, we went to the spot. And as I'm, I'm walking up the block, I see, you know, a crowd forming. And I look and I'm like, what's going on? Let me peep this. So I go up to the corner and they, and in the middle of the street, there's these two dudes. It's one big, big Viking looking dude. You know what I'm saying? And then I see this other cat and they're scrapping. You know what I'm saying? And the big dude's trying to grab this kid. You know, he's like trying to grab him in a bear hug. And the other kid's just, you know, dipping and bobbing and weaving and, and snuffing the dude. You know what I'm saying? Well, anyway, I guess the fight took off and you know whatever they broke it up whatever happened you know what I'm saying so the kid comes over and you know he's he's cool you know what I'm saying he comes over you know you know just dusting himself off and he's like yo what up what up and everybody's like patting his back and what up the other dude walked away whatever you know like a regular scrap a street fight so my brother's like yo yo this is noise bro this is noise so I'm like yo what up noise I'm like, yo, that's crazy, bro. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. So from that day on, bro, we just all started chilling. You know what I'm saying? And, and spitting bars and, you know, the rest is history. You know what I'm saying? That was the uh, addition to King Staff. You know what I mean? Peace to MC North. Yeah, so here's the story I'm sure you've probably heard throughout the years. You know, I was... Uh I had graduated from high school. I got my high school diploma at 16 years old. And I was waiting to join the military. I had to turn 18 before I could join the army. So I had like two years there where I was, I had just moved to Bay Ridge. I, had, I was living in uh, Queens and we moved to Bay Ridge. And so I started hanging out, you know, started hanging out on the corner and, you know, started messing around, selling drugs or whatever, you know. Anyway, my friend worked during the day, you know, so we were out there in the morning, we opened up shop, you know, so we were out in the corner in the morning and in the morning is a lot of like downtime. You know, like in the afternoon, in the evening, around six o'clock, that's when everything, you know, people start lining up and really selling real quick. In the morning, it's kind of slow, you know, which is cool because you don't get the heat from the police. But, you know, you still, you know what I mean, can make a little bit of change or whatever. So anyway, but there's a lot of downtime. You're just sitting around and shit, you know. So I used to be rhyming. I used to say a couple of bombs here and there every day because we were big hip hop fans on the corner. So I would be, I started rhyming. So everybody started telling me. They were like, yo, in this neighborhood, when it comes to music, you gotta talk to Willie. You gotta meet Will. You gotta, everything was Will. And then they were like, yo, we're gonna introduce you to his brother. Cause his brother's on the corner, you know what I mean? He's gonna come later on. So they introduced me to Dre first. 
So, you know, we talked, we kicked it, you know, bust a couple bombs or whatever. He was like, yo, you got to meet my brother Will. So I was on the corner and, you know, Will came through. I was in a fight, fighting over, you know, trying who's making money and all that. Anyway, that was the first time I met Will, the grand surgeon. Anyway, so I was, um, so we met, you know, we talked and everything. We hit it off pretty cool, you know. And he told me about the history of the group. I already knew because, like, in that neighborhood, like, you would always hear about the records, you know, that they had made and that they're on the radio and that King Staff, King Staff this, King Staff that. Because in that area, nobody, there was no real hip hop. Nobody really, you know, nobody at that time, man, at least there was no other hip hop artist or. Nobody was, you know, going to the studio. Nobody was even rhyming, you know. It was just, I mean, if they were DJing, they were playing, like, maybe Hip House or some other shit, you know. But anyway, so when, you know, we met and we talked and this and that. So then Will was like, yo, we should go to the studio. So I was like, all right, cool, you know, let's go to the studio. I don't, I'm not doing nothing. I mean, I was, like, 16, 17 years old. I'm waiting to go to the Army. So, you know, I didn't know anything about a studio. So Will picked the studio and he picked Funky Slice. Downtown Brooklyn, it's notorious, you know. But at that time, I think it was starting out. Or it was beginning, but it was starting to get, I don't know how, even how he, he found out about it, but it was a hip hop studio. So we went down to Funky Slice. And, you know, after we went and all that, it became kind of notorious. For, you know, making hip hop tracks and making demos and and all that. You know, I don't even know if it exists anymore, but um so we went down there and I didn't know anything, you know. They brought their girls to the studio, you know what I'm saying? We brought pit bulls to the studio, you know, they brought their girls or whatever. And it was like it was to me, it was like I didn't know much, you know, I didn't really know anything. But that's the thing, you know, when I joined the group. Will, and this is why one of the reasons why I always love working with the Grand Surgeon, because he always like incorporated my ideas. He took my ideas, you know, like the idea was that at that time I was listening to a lot of Chicago blues. Because if you know me, my favorite music is American. I like, I like bebop jazz from New York, and I like Delta blues from Chicago. That's that's always been my favorite music. So, you know, I wanted to sample Howlin' Wolf. Just like a little intro, you know. So, Will, he took the sample and he was like, wait up, hold up, boom. And he threw a beat behind it. And it came out real interesting. It was like, what the, you know what I'm saying? It was like, shit was flavor, bro. So, you know, we used that. And we took more time on the sample than... Well, we should have, because at that time, you know, like, you couldn't just, like, it's not like nowadays where you could plug a mic into a computer and just have a studio in your crib. At that time, the only people that were going to the studio were people that had juice or, you know, were out there hustling and put money down to go to the studio or whatever, or had juice with a record company, which you're going to pay for in the long run regardless. But, um... So it was a privilege to go to the studio. And when we went to the studio, it wasn't like we're going in there to experiment. We had everything mapped out. We're going in there, we're dropping lyrics. And so the, when we went in there, the Grand Surgeon, he kind of like took over the session, the first recording session. He just like, you know, there was an engineer there, you know, but it was more like, okay, you know, he would go, boom, loop the track, loop the samples. He was playing the beatbox, he was doing this, he was doing that, he took over. He'd run into the booth, drop the lyrics one time, you know, come back out, do the final mix down. It was an amazing performance. I was just sitting there like, wow, I can't believe it, you know? Let me just stay out of his way, let him do his thing. He did the whole thing. That's the thing that people don't understand about, about the Grand Surgeon. When I first met him, he was more like, Cause I met him like, and we went to parties and all that. And he was, you know, people would pass the mic around and he wasn't the type of person that would always jump on the mic. He was more like a DJ in the beginning. 
In the beginning, he would be behind the wheels of steel or whatever. If he felt like, he, you know, he might touch the mic or whatever, because everybody wanted to hear him rhyme. But he was more like a DJ producer. And I always say to myself, I wish he could get back to that, you know, because that's the real grand surgeon that I know, you know what I'm saying? Because he was very creative studio-wise. Just imagine the kind of music he would have made. But, um, but then, you know, his voice was like, his voice was, to me, is one of my favorite voices in hip hop. You know, it's like, it's a perfect, to me, anyway, it's, it's, it's the type of voice that, you know, that I like to hear. And his rhythm, see, you focus on the voice, you don't understand his rhythm, his flow. You know, he got a lot of flow when he steps into the rhyme, you know what I mean? His flow, and then when, when I hear him rhyme, I hear myself. Cause like there's certain things that he does that it reminds me of me or the way I used to run. You know, he, he's got like that little stop and like that was like my flow to stop and go and stop and go. Like some of the flows. Because, you know, at that time, the real, the best grand surgeon is the part you never heard. Like me talking to him, on, we used to talk every day on the phone. And we used to go back and forth, you know, like with the rhymes on the phone, over the phone, that was the best grand surgeon that I ever heard. Because it was like, I, we, we had like a competition going, but we both got better and better and better and better. Because when I joined the group, I was like nothing like him. But then it got to a point where I was up there with him and we could go back and forth and he would get better. He would, you know, it was a, it was a, it was, it was an interesting, it was like a good versus evil. It was an interesting dichotomy within the group within the parameters of the group and then Dre was just like he was like the comedic force behind the you know the comedic uh, r relief behind the other two classic artists so um, you know I always love working with him we always work good together because like I said he incorporates some of my ideas and uh, it's a great working relationship, and I really appreciate it. I like the work we're doing on this project. Blau, General Effects.